As a punishment, they took Lord Harry's name away and put him at the back of the shed. He soon heard Culgee's story about Godred. Pooh, he said. That couldn't happen to me. But he was anxious all the same. Please, sir, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try to be different. The passengers don't trust you, said the manager. You will take the truck instead. So number six took supplies to Summit Hotel. He took the gangers to work in the morning. And brought them home in the evening. He found it dull and grumbled. It's important work, protested Wilfred. And tough too. Tough? That little lot. Yes, tough, said Caldy. Have you ever been across Devil's Back in a gale? No, said number six thoughtfully. But I see what you mean. A mile below Summit, the line runs along a rocky ridge. Always there is wind. Sometimes it is gentle. At others it is fierce and very dangerous. Then all passenger trains stop at Devil's Back Station. But whatever the weather, stores trains and rescue trains must get through. A few days later, number six reached Devil's Back at 5.15. He was on his way with the truck to fetch railway staff from Summit. All clear now, said the station master last down train left the loop. Don't waste time, the wind's rising. We'll have a gale in half an hour. He went inside to set the points. But the telephone rang and he came out looking worried. There's trouble, he told the crew. Come in and discuss it out of the wind. They filled the truck's big tank with water and sandbags ballasted the van. The wind whistled round them as they worked. What is all this? Asked number six. There's been a climbing accident explained his driver. Coldy and Catherine are bringing up a doctor and a rescue team. But Catherine's too light to stand this gale, so we'll go up ourselves. The water and the sandbags will steady us. And if you can keep going, we have a good chance of getting through. Can you do it? I'll have a jolly good try, said number six. When Coldy arrived, the doctor and the rescue team changed trains. The manager was there too. Splendid, he said when he saw the preparations. Now, number six, it's up to you. The guard signaled the driver, and they were off. A real job at last, heard number six, exultantly. Now I'll show them. Now I'll show them. Leaving the shelter of the station, the full force of the gale stuck him out of the road. Caldy and Catherine saw him waver. Go it, go it, they yelled. Number six heard them for a moment.
They brought the climbers safely down, and an ambulance whisked them to hospital. Next morning, their leader came to say thank you. My friend Patrick, he said, hurt himself helping me, but he's mending now thanks to you and your brave engine. We'd all be proud if you'd call him Patrick too. The manager smiled. Oh, number six. Would you like that? He asked. Oh, sir. Yes, please. Patrick and the others, all good friends. He is still brave, still ready to take risks when needed, but he knows now that it is stupid to take them just for the sake of showing off. <laughs>